All right, hello, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the third in a series of Brandpoint webinar productions. My name is Steve Heron, and I'm the president of Brandpoint Services. We're a national general contractor and facility maintenance provider for multi-site clients across the United States and Canada. And I am joined again today by another esteemed panel uh, that I'm very excited about. So today uh, we're going to be discussing, you know, similarly to what we've discussed over the past few webinars, uh, obviously things that are happening in our new reality that we all share. So the questions we're going to have our panelists speaking to initially are the protocols essential businesses have put in place working. How are you handling supplier and vendor engagement? Uh, are in-person meetings taking place? And what new technologies are you implementing? That's the overall theme of this discussion. However, um, I'm sure we'll cover other facets of the business. If anybody that is tuned in and listening, first of all, I thank you for your time. I think you're going to enjoy this, but we want you to participate. So don't hesitate, if you pan your cursor over the bottom of your screen, it should pull up commands and one of them is a Q&A and one of them is chat. We would prefer you use the Q&A and you may submit any question that you feel is relevant to the discussion uh, in the Q&A and we will go through and try to answer as many questions as possible. So we definitely want this to be more interactive. So we're looking for all of you that are listening and watching so please do ask anything that's on your mind because I think you're gonna find we have a great, great panel, very interesting panel. And why don't I start by introducing that panel? So I'll kick it off by introducing Mr. Doug Phillips, calling in today uh, from San Antonio, Texas. Doug is the Director of Maintenance, Energy, Waste and Recycling at Petco. Been doing that I think in August, it'll be four years for Doug at Petco. Prior to that, he was the Director of Maintenance for Neiman Marcus. Prior to that, he had stops with Transwestern and CBRE. So let, let, let me just say, he's been in the industry a while, spanning decades. Uh, and there is no one that I've come across that's more enjoyable to share a cocktail with than Doug in terms of the stories he can regale you with, particularly around fishing, uh, but also the trials and tribulations of his son, who's a professional bodybuilder. Uh, or at least semi-retired professional bodybuilder and his grandson who's a chip off the old block and by that one I mean by, uh, chip off Doug. Uh, but most interesting to me of all and if any of you ever get a chance to grill him on this, Doug used to be a professional bull rider and those stories will really 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 intrigue you. Uh, I'm fascinated by his old rodeo stories. So you heard that correctly, professional bull rider. Welcome to the show. Doug Phillips. Doug, thanks for joining us. Next uh, on our panel, we have another Doug, two Dougs on one panel, Mr. Doug Shade, construction project manager for Icon Automotive Group, known in the Philly area as Pep Boys, Manny Moe and Jack, and one of the oldest and most iconic brands around. He's calling in from Pittsburgh because he's actually working today. And I uh, was kind enough to take the time to, to to join our panel. Doug's also been in the business a long time, but prior to getting into this business, he actually studied musical theater and massage therapy. He's a father of four, a huge movie buff, claiming to be able to recite lines from almost any movie. And from what I'm hearing, he actually even moved to Hollywood at one point to pursue a career in acting. Uh, from what I'm told, he was actually going to play Jack in Titanic, but was nudged out in the end. The studio went with some guy named DiCaprio. I don't know if that's <laughs> true or not, but Doug, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. All right. And then last but not least today, we are joined by Mike Rolves, Senior Director of Design and Construction at Heartland Dental. Mike's been in the business a while, 19 years, including a 12-year stint with Panera Bread prior to joining Heartland Dental. He's calling in from St. Louis, Missouri, and so you'll find it no coincidence that he's a huge blues fan. Yes, music, he likes the blues, but more importantly, the defending world champions. And I'm sure he'd like to see them back on the ice as soon as possible to defend that title. He's an avid golfer and traveler. Uh, fun fact that I'm aware of is that when Mike was at Restaurant Point at an event in San Antonio a little while back, he had an opportunity to meet with players and coaches from the Atlanta Hawks. And his wife was there and she courageously went up to the head coach and asked if they had any tickets to give away. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, no tickets were received. 
from what I understand. But uh, anyhow, welcome, Mike. Thanks for joining Thanks. us. Thanks, Steve. So what we do typically to kick these things off is we, we do go around to each panelist and hear some opening comments about the topic at hand. So I'll go around in the order I introduced each of you. I'll ask you to speak for a couple of minutes to just share interesting happenings in your world around COVID and otherwise, but certainly if you could put focus to the questions that we posed up front, that'd be great. Doug Phillips, I'll start with you. And let me oh, just, re Doug. I'll restate the questions for you one more time. How, how are you handling store openings? And I know Petco's been open, so please speak to that. Um, what are the variances by state and is that affecting your national plan? Uh, what, what protocols or essential businesses have in place? How are you handling supplier vendor engagement? And are there any new technologies being in, implemented? So if you want to speak to any of those, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, again, I'm Doug Phillips. Uh, thank you for the, the crazy introduction. I feel like going <laughs> Sunday, 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 you know. Uh, no, uh, we obviously, we were considered an essential business. We sell a, a mass majority of the dog food in the United States and pet food, I should say, not just dogs. Uh, the COVID thing affects us mostly, uh, our partners, right? We're concerned about our partners. So, you know, we followed all of the guidelines that were, were presented to essential businesses as far as keeping them safe. From a facilities and construction standpoint, obviously it slowed down uh, remodels and uh, large scale facility uh, capital projects. But from a standpoint of repair and maintenance, we, we move forward. Uh, our struggles state by state, obviously, were the states that had lockdowns on contractors. You know, that it's hard sometimes for a policeman in Manhattan to understand that the HVAC contractor is going to an essential business when they say it's Petco. So we, we provided uh, letters to our, our vendors so that they could get into our areas that were considered lock on lockdown. Uh, we, we really didn't have any, uh, any issues with that. They all told us once they presented those letters, they were able to move forward. Uh, we are phasing back in our, our, we had a huge run on pet food when this first happened. Obviously it was people thinking they might be locked down for a long time. And so our sales actually went way up at first, like any other type of, of whether you're selling toilet paper or pet food, people were buying it in bulk. Um, and then we had a slight taper off. The good news for us is we have a very, very robust online business, which was already engaged heavily prior to this happening. And so it just sort of skyrocketed there, already in place, new measures to handle our business. So um, now that we've sort of leveled out, we're, we're going back in cautiously. We don't have any of our support people back in our main call centers yet in San Diego or San Antonio. We're all still remote. Uh, our IT department was, was, insanely good. I mean, we, we literally have probably more IT problems when we're working in the office. And now we plucked all of our people. I have 25. Everybody went to their house and we were able to support them with our IT, with our IT remote, probably better than we were when we were there. So uh, having strong IT, having a really, really good business plan in place. And I know every company has, they hope they have a good business plan. Ours just happened to be being put in place and changing right as this happened. So uh, we were really able to offset a lot of our brick and mortar sales issues by uh, massive increases in online business. So there was a, a whole article written in Forbes about our CEO about a couple weeks ago, so you can read that. Okay. Um, now in, in construction, we're, we're, we're releasing our projects again. We're going back in and looking at prioritization, wondering if anything has changed. I'm sure there's gonna be certain areas of the country that are have a new normal uh, shopping center traffic will obviously be a consideration that we have to think about. So we, we rely on the Panera breads and the pet boys to people are coming in to buy that. They come by and get you know, pet food. So, and come see our vets and our, uh, you know, our new hospitals and things like that. So uh, staging it back in following guidelines in given uh, jurisdictions, but, but all's well with, with us. It, it worked out pretty well. All right. So as Doug is speaking, as you're listening, if Doug says anything that, again, spurs your curiosity and you have a further question, as I move on to the other Doug to uh, make his opening comments, please, everybody that's listening, put your questions into Q&A, and we'll try to get them answered. 
So let's move over to Doug Shade. Doug, talk a little bit about your business and uh, what happened in the early part of this thing and what's happening now. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was it was kind of uh, mayhem, I, I think, uh, because things um, looked like they were projecting to shut down. And, and our corporate center is located um, in Philadelphia, uh, which we, we were not too far from Brand Point. Um, and, um, it, it, Friday, it was like, oh, there's, there's craziness happening. And then Monday, the mayor said, we're, I'm shutting down the city. Um, and so, um, like Doug Phillips said, mentioned our IT department did a phenomenal job. There were, um, in the majority of our company is working off of laptops. Um, but there were people that had desktops, you know, that really didn't take their work home or never needed to travel. And so, you know, within the announcement was made, I think about one o'clock and by 4.30, um, there was a laptop in every person's um, hand that worked within corporate so that they could continue to work from home. Um, and, you know, life looks a little bit different, but again, they did a phenomenal job of making sure that everyone had access to our VPN um, and uh, could all work remotely. Um, we had already utilized Skype um, in um, in our, in our day-to-day -day meetings, um, not a lot of video calls. Um, and so that wasn't the, uh, I think a, a big hurdle to get over just because we continue to use, you know, that platform uh, for our meetings and, and whatnot. Um, you know, as far as our, our stores, um, we are essential because you know, we do, uh, we sell auto parts, um, and, uh, and do, uh, perform service for, um, uh, for our cars. And so there are a couple things, obviously we, we, we put together, I think like a, most people had, which, you know, was the signs on the doors, you know, asking, um, folks to, you know, wear uh, face masks and to do the social distancing of at least six feet. Um, um, but we also implemented then, a, a kind of a touchless, uh, uh, key exchange, you, you'll say, and it was, um, a, a way for our customers to be able to do, deliver our uh, their keys and drop off their car and talk with a service advisor without actually having any type of hand in hand. Um, so we provided gloves and there were um, bags that they could put their in and drop it into a box. Um, and uh, our technicians would be able to retrieve them who are always wearing gloves because of grease and whatnot. Um, but it was just kind of an additional thing that we could have done to just to make sure that we're not, you know, spreading, you know, the, the disease any further than it need to be. And obviously hand sanitizer everywhere um, and whatnot. So trying to do whatever we can to, um, you know, to, to prevent the, the, you know, the disease from continuing to spread. Um, you know, as far as our, our reopening plan, because we never really shut down. I mean, there were some, certain areas that I think um, uh, were affected. You know, Puerto Rico was one of them. We have, stores in Puerto Rico um, that were affected um, by this as well. And I was actually, as of today, there was about 15 of them um, that have been able to reopen on the service and the retail side. Um, <clears throat> and the, um, and as we, our national plan basically is as, you know, the jurisdictions and the, and the states um, how are, are allowing um, more and more businesses to open up and whatnot, we were kind of, just kind of continuing and monitoring that very closely with our area directors and vice presidents throughout the country. I bet you're seeing a lot of car batteries issues, huh? We are seeing, yeah, we're seeing a lot of car battery things. We, uh, we've had actually a fair amount. I was actually just talking to the store that I was at today. A lot of people um, were just dropping their cars off, um, thinking that was the new norm of, uh, well, I can't go into the store, so I'll just drop it off. Uh, and they put the the keys in the, in the, in the night drop, and and so it would you know a manager would call and hey um, did you drop off your car here and you know and they're like oh yeah I thought that's what we did now we just dropped it <laughs> off and you guys would let me know when it's done right <laughs> um, but yeah no I mean there's um, our service has been very busy I think retail has has had a little bit of a hit on it just because you know retail is more of the the do it yourselfers which mm -hmm. I think. Um, you know, when you're in quarantine and, and, and the, and just the state of the world right now, um, probably, you know, working on an old car or, or doing little things to your own car, it, it kind of gets back um, at times. So we, we've seen a hit from that, but, you know, we have a really strong foundation here. And so we're, we're not concerned at all about it. All right. Thank you for those comments, Doug. So we've heard from the pet world. 
in retail and we've heard from automotive and now let's go a complete different direction here into healthcare. So Mike, take it away with some comments, please. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, so I work for Heartland Dental. For those of you that don't know, don't know of our company, um, Heartland Dental is the largest DSO in the U.S. DSO stands for Dental Service Organization. Um, with we've got over a thousand offices, about fifteen hundred dentists that we support, um, all locally branded offices. So some of you may go to a Heartland Dental office and not even realize it. Um, and what we do is we manage the day to day, the staffing, the uh, HR, the insurance, all the things that uh, that go into uh, each and every dental office, and taking that off the dentist's plate so they can they can do nothing but focus on dentistry. So that's kind of our business model, and you know, we were we're growing, we're growing rapidly. Um, had a spectacular uh, January and February, and then mid March uh, the COVID uh, uh, regulations came and we essentially closed every single one of our offices. Wow. Without, other than other than emergency services, we, we were closed. So our revenue basically was, revenue stream was basically cut off. So with that obviously requires us to kind of cut some spending and things like that. And so from a construction development standpoint, we um, stopped almost all of our projects. We kept a few of them going that, uh, that we had underway. Uh, so we didn't have to re try to remobilize and, and, and get, incur uh, additional costs there. Um, but I mean, as everybody else on here probably knows, construction business kind of slowed down just with all of the restrictions from the uh, individuals on sites and uh, all, uh, getting materials and all of those things. So we still have a few projects going, but for the most part, we, we halted all spending uh, and, and development as well as throughout most of the company. And that'll be one, obviously, many people with companies like mine will be paying attention to, right? Is yeah. the reality that, uh, you know, initial reaction at least is going to be let's stop spending and let's just see where this is going right exactly yep. yeah yep. so that's we went through that for a couple of months and, and as many of you know now a lot of dental offices are opening back up uh, we're going through a lot of precautions um, in lockstep with the ADA uh, American Dental Association CDC um, you know we're, we're a lot of discussions with ashtray and, and mechanicals and, and things like that so how do we protect our patients uh, mostly we're, we're handling it with um, just different procedures. Uh, for example, doing an interview of every patient uh, before they come to our office, asking them to wait in their cars if they can until they're ready to go in the chair. Uh, once they're in their chair, uh, trying to either close out uh, all of their, um, of their visit while still in the chair so we don't have to go up to the counter or do anything like that, or call in after they leave again and close, every, close out their bill um, so we're just trying to obviously limit the amount of touch points and, and um, any sort of contact with the, with with them and with us and both, right? It's a two-way street. And then following all the regulations for ADA on the PPE and um, all, all the different procedures from, from a laundry perspective to clean, nightly cleaning, daily cleaning, all of those things that we really have, are working through um, with, uh, with all of the governing factors, our governing authorities like the uh, American Dental Association, et cetera. Well, and I would think then, are you, you're probably going to be a state by state situation as yes. you roll back out, huh? Yeah, we definitely have the uh, overall uh, federal from the ADA, and then each each state has their own restrictions as well. Um, and we have our own practices that we put in place that are above and beyond uh, what we would be required to do, just for good faith and, and for good business practices. So there's a lot of different, a lot of different aspects, a lot of different uh, um, procedures that we've been putting in place over the last uh, last. Well, essentially ever since this came about, but now that we're opening back up, we've got all of these things in place and up and running. All right. And that segues actually to, it looks like we have some questions coming in. Uh, and the first question I think relates to that, Mike, so I'll throw this back at you. And then okay. if you, uh, and then we'll go back through the panel uh, to also comment. So question that came in, what policies and procedures that have changed due to the coronavirus pandemic do you see sticking around more permanently, say even six months from now, a year or longer? Uh, for me, the biggest thing, uh, because we are so close, uh, obviously in a working uh, environment with, with the dental practice, is the, the requirements for the PPE, from the masks, from the equipment, from the laundry, from the uh, cleanliness. I mean, there's always been a lot of restrictions on dentistry, but it's definitely doubled down since this has happened. Um, so I see a lot of those sticking around for a long time. And, you know, to be honest, they're, they're, causing some, some ripple effects of 
For example, you've got your doctor with three layers of PPE on. We're seeing major strains on our HVAC because they're really cranking down, cranking down the air conditioning. And so we're having a lot of issues with our HVAC right now. Uh, it's just one example of, of the effects that we have from those types of things. The, for every action, there is another, there's a reaction that we're so not- Yeah, we're trying to figure the best way to, to manage those. Uh, Interesting. If, if that's gonna be a long term, we're gonna have to really do an overhaul of our HVAC system wide. Interesting. Doug Phillips, what about that one? What policies and procedures have you seen changed at Petco that you think could stick around after all of this? Oh, well, a couple things that I am, a, I'm a naysayer on change. So I'm one of the guys that when they came to me in the 80s and said, hey, Doug, if you buy a 486 Commodore, it'll be the last computer you ever need. And I said, who needs a computer to balance their checkbook? This is a fad. So uh, you were obviously I missed the boat on the technology back then, <laughs> but I also have been the kind of guy that's like, listen, I want, you know, rear ends and chairs. I need to go walk out. You know, I'd manage by walking around kind of thing. I go out, I'm used to being able to walk right up to anybody. I have a question of if, if somebody has a question of me, I can say, hey, let's grab a conference room. We all go in there and there's a lot of communication day to day to day. And I absolutely did not believe it could be done remote. So uh, you know, and leading by example, I didn't work remote. I was in office 12, 13 hours a day, every single day. And I'll tell you, I don't think my team has really missed a beat after week one. Um, we, we communicate, we have daily team meetings. So ev every single person is on a video conference every day and we, we just communicate more. And I, at first I thought it was going to be more difficult and it really isn't. My team has actually found that training new employees has been easier to do it through zoom than it was when they're standing over their shoulder trying to explain something they're looking at their face instead of their back of their head and uh some things have really worked out i, I honestly see um most of my managers working a percentage of their time remote all the time uh and we actually seem to be getting a little bit more done um, there's not all that extra distraction, especially at Petco, right? Everybody brings their animal to work. So I have less dog barking while I'm here in my office than I do if I'm at the corporate office. Uh, you know that you've, you've said it on calls there. Uh, the other thing I think from us, from an actual business standpoint is, uh, you know, with us, it's, it's all about the meet and greet. So you come in, everybody's got their dog. The first thing everybody does is gets down and rubs the dog's face and rubs their hands and then immediately stands up and shakes somebody's hand. I think a lot of that's probably going to stop. You know, uh, I think the, the whole, Hey, how you doing thing is probably going to be a stick. I don't know if, uh, if I want to shake everybody's hand at the airport anymore. So, right. Uh, yep. Some yeah, of those good. things I think are, that, and I never thought about that because uh, I have I've cats, so I don't bring my cats anywhere, but dogs are very social animals and dog owners are very social people and that whole congregating, your dogs are going to interact, you're going to want to pet the other dogs, the kids are going to want to pet the other dogs, that's going to be a really interesting uh, right. social dynamic going forward. And Petco is always a place where that happens, right? There's all training going on or grooming right. going on or gathering. Yeah, that's very interesting. Doug, how about you, Doug Shade? What are your thoughts on this topic? What's yeah, going mean, to change I, for What's going to change for the long haul? Yeah, I I, I believe uh, as far as I, or I agree with with both Mike and Doug that the masks are probably going to stay for quite some time, and the awareness of uh you know of just touching and 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 um and shaking hands and whatnot and being germ conscious it's going to last for a long time. Um, you know, this is something that uh, I never believed that like, we would go through. Uh, this was something that happened in, you know, the uh, medieval days or even in the early 1900s before modern technology, modern medicine and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and unfortunately, probably modern technology might have had a hand in driving this um, to the place where we're at now, you know, because everything is so accessible. Um, and, and um, you know, and a lot of the, you know, think, you, you know, you're, um, I never thought a computer would be this, um, you know, and, and I touch that thing probably about, you know, about 1 million times a day. Um, <laughs> so, um, so there's, I, I, I think there will be some lasting things. I, you know, it, you know, as far as some of the stuff that we've implemented on our side, I, I think they will definitely, you know, just because of people's awareness, we're going to continue to offer them after, you know, hopefully this goes away and life, you know, starts to look a little bit more normal. 
um, just because I think that people are going to want them. It's going to it's going to be a, a blanket of security um, moving forward. All right, we have more questions coming in. So I'll go back. I'll start with Mike. Uh, question came in with capital expenditures constrained. How are your new construction and remodeling projects changing? Have you seen anything on this yet, Mike? I would say the biggest thing right now is we're trying to um, select the projects that will have the most impact or the highest ROI um, and, and doing those first. Versus before, uh, from an opening a new office standpoint, we were trying to get as many open as fast as we could, uh, you know, quantity as well. So we we're trying to be we're we're going to be a little bit more selective than we've been in the past, um, as a as a growth company, at least until we get back up and running again. Right, we're just now getting our flywheel kicked off, and but it's going to be a while when you're at basically zero revenue for two months. It seems like you could bounce back from that pretty quick, but it, it's not that simple. We have to really get that flywheel going again before we're, we're back up and running at all, like, all cylinders. It, you just nailed it. One of the most ominous quotes I read this past weekend was from the CEO of Hertz when Hertz, you know, made public that they had filed for bankruptcy. This is a hundred year old iconic yeah. brand. And the CEO said, no business is designed for zero revenue for two months. Yeah. You know, like that's very difficult yep. to withstand. Yep. So Absolutely. We'll, we'll see what the fallout is there. Uh, Doug Phillips, any uh, comments on this one? What yeah. cap with capital expenditures constrained, how are your new construction and remodeling projects changing? So it's much like Mike's, we've, we've really just taken, we're, we're starting anew, right? Now, one of the things is we have some new leadership also, so we were almost reevaluating anyway, but this has just really caused us to just stop and take all of our remodels and all of our new store construction stuff and say, number one, who's still going to be here to help us, right? Obviously, brand point is, but I had several of my vendors go under. Just, we're sorry we uh, can't continue wow. anymore. And uh, we've gone through RFPs to get to a selection, and now this company can't uh, survive. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some consolidation, I think. And with that, we're just starting over. So we've really just taken our, our remodel projects and said, listen, start over, go back to bid, go back to the new reality. Is there anything, we have to relook at these uh, specs, right? Say, is there anything we need to build into it now? For instance, something like sneeze guards, we just ordered a whole bunch. Well, is that something that's just, should be, should we look at those better now and say, well, that, that ugly thing did its job, but if we think we're gonna start, can we design one of those in? Should we just design those in from the start and have a better product when it comes out instead of it hanging from the T-bar or whatever, uh, right. whatever they had? So that's been our big thing, consolidation of vendors, uh, going back to just starting over from square one, saying, sorry, I know you guys looked at this six, eight months ago, we're starting back, so rebid all the jobs. Yeah. And uh, that's been our big thing. Okay. And how about you, Doug Shea? Comments on this one? Yeah, so um, we've had, had a couple of things that were, I would say, just kind of stalled out um, just when this whole thing went down because um, I had, you know, number, numerous uh, projects that are actually uh, within, in cities, uh, and I was waiting on permits. And cities kind of like shut down for uh, for a time being, and um, and so just recently, I would say within the last three weeks, we've started to really you know pick up steam and and push forward with those. You know, we have a lot of um, plans in the works, um, which I can't really delve into, but um, you know, uh, our our growth uh, plan is, is still kind of set in place, and um, you know, as of this past week, we're we're, we're rolling full steam ahead. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of things uh, coming up in the near future uh, for us. Um, obviously, the, it's looked a little bit different because I've had to go back to projects that I had out for bid and um, that were in permitting. And I was like, all right, well, let, let's cut this and let's cut that. And let's, you know, it, what if I delete this and I delete that? And then you're going back to bidders basically and asking them to rebid on something. Um, but you know, beyond the additional administrative work, you know, we're moving forward, um, you know, with our growth plan. Well, it's interesting. I've, I view all three of the businesses represented here as, you know, fairly recession resilient. COVID aside, if the you know, the recession that's inevitable now here 
uh, takes place, you're still in, the three of you are in businesses that are going to be fairly resilient or are proven to be, from my experience, fairly uh, recession resilient. Um, but it, I, I think you make an interesting point, Doug Phillips, about you've got an existing plan that was about to go forward for a new store, but we didn't consider that we might need sneeze guards and maybe they're permanent sneeze guards and do we need to tweak these plans, right? So that, that's going to be really interesting. All right, let's see what other questions are rolling in here. Um, I've got a couple handy that I wanted to ask. Are there um, anything going on around fixturing, cleaning routines, verification of that? What, what, how have the cleaning regimens changed, if, if at all? I'll start with Mike Robles. So obviously for, for us, it's, a little bit different with the uh, um, with the dental and, uh, the, and the cleaning procedures. Um, I'd say the easiest way for me to put it is more frequent and more intense. I, I mean, we're cleaning at a completely different level every night. We're engaging with some additional um, uh, cleaning companies that can that can do a deeper clean for us. Um, laundry is is a big thing for us. Um, from wearing scrubs and gowns and, you know, we can't allow people to take anything home and wash it. So we're having to uh, uh, launder, uh, use professionals for our laundry. Um, the PPE uh, increase in the cost of the PPE is astronomical from a business standpoint. So that's something else we're trying to absorb. So there's just, there's a lot of things from, from that perspective that are changing our day-to-day -day procedures. And, and, and overall, obviously, we'll, I would assume impact uh, cost and profitability uh, as we get further into this. Yep, inevitably it will. Doug Phillips, your comments on this one? Yeah, we're, you know, there's there's different stages, right? In, in our world, it's, you're trying to not be a feed store, right? We're a high end. I, I don't, I would say, you know, if you, if you looked across the board, we're probably closer to the Neiman Marcus version of buying food than going to the feed store. When I when I was rodeoing, if I couldn't buy it at the feed store, I didn't need it. That went from my jeans to my to whatever. Uh, and then to step to Neiman Marcus was sort of a shock to my system of you got to be kidding me. Uh, I actually had a vendor say to me one time when I told him his prices were too high. He said sell another shirt, and uh, <laughs> it was it was a different a different thing. Well, now with with pet food, it's the same thing, right? We we you don't think of walking in and buying a bag of dog food is going to be you got to be hyper clean, but every kid comes in and presses his face against the fish tanks and everybody that comes in to get their dog groomed leans on the counters. And so it has brought to light a lot more regimented in-house cleaning. We also uh, obviously engage anywhere that we think there's been an issue, a more uh, outside service type of cleaning. And then obviously when we know there's been a case, it's a, it's a different scenario, but we have to be careful. We can't just go in with the, with the mister at midnight and miss the whole store because we have live animals. So everything's got to be touched and, and hand wiped. So uh, I, I don't see that forever, but I do think that I think every employee is probably more conscious of it. And I'm sure that wiping down the doorknobs to the restrooms, wiping down the sinks, wiping down the POS stations is probably going to be forever now. I think yep. people be cognizant of what's wiped down the countertops, you know, Doug Shade, do you have anything to add on this one? Yeah, I, I mean, it's just kind of piggybacking on, I think, on both Mike and Doug. But, but yeah, our, our cleaning protocols have, have stepped up. Um, you know, we uh, where it was more of a requirement that we, you know, clean the windows and, and the door handles and things like that, um, you know, at, either at the beginning or at the end of a shift, you know, it, it's gone into make sure this is done, you know, four times a day. Um, you know, we have outside companies that come in and do a deep cleaning for us, um, and that has increased and, and been stepped up on our corporate level and also on the store level as well. Um, and so, you know, we, we've def definitely spent a little bit more capital, I think, in trying to, you know, keep the, the stores as sanitary as possible. All right, questions are rolling in now. It was a slow start. Now we're rolling. Okay, I'm just going to see the ones that catch my eye. Uh, this was directed to Mike. Mike, you mentioned a new strain on HVAC systems. What are some of the new cleaning protocols and changes to operations and filtration of HVAC to keep spread and exposure of viruses at bay? Are both Doug's also seeing new issues with HVAC? So I'll start with Mike and then I'll ask both Doug's to comment on HVAC. Yeah, we, we've done a lot of research on the different filters. Um, 
and some of those some of those uh, changes that we make on filters are are in good faith because I, I don't believe there's a lot of proof of, of it really impacting is kind of what we've been hearing, but we are making changes to our filters, uh, putting putting higher um, MER filters et cetera into our HVAC systems. But as a lot of us know, that that has an even bigger strain on our systems. And so not only are we cranking them down, we're putting bigger filters in there. So our hope is that that's a short term solution. Um, because it's gonna it's gonna cause havoc on our HVAC systems throughout the uh, throughout the, the especially the summer months coming up. So um, but beyond that, I mean, uh, we do uh, have a very uh, we've got a very close eye on ASHRAE recommendations. Um, you know, pos um, you know the positive airflow is, is a big way to to ensure that um, or sorry that yeah, yeah positive airflow is, is a way to ensure that you get the right amount of air turnover. Um, but that takes a lot to go into those systems. So we know that those are options. Those aren't requirements yet. We're still looking into those with, with a lot of uh, different um, opinions and uh, things that we're going to continue to look at and test and test, right? But th those are, those are going to take a while to, to uh, implement into a thousand footprint system. Yep. So. Yep. I would think so. Doug Phillips, any comments on the HVAC? Well, yeah. In, in these cases, in, in our locations, I should say, we're, there's a couple things that help us with this. Number one, we already use a Merv 8 seamless filter system. Uh, we don't use a box. Number two, we utilize a concentric. So our, our returns are 12, 14 feet in the air, and so are our supplies. So to get, you know, a, this, isn't, this isn't like Legionella that's just flowing through the air. It's, it's more of a droplet type of issue. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know with our systems we're we're pretty secure with that, and then with our wellness rooms and our grooming areas, we're running those in negatives anyway. So we're already exhausting a ton of air, along with the fact that there's small animals within the store. We run a higher rate of OA to start with, so we have a lot of air changes. We have high, very high deck uh, units, and then we have ex uh, negative in a few of the a few of the parts of the store. So. Uh, we're pretty confident that we're doing everything we can with that. Now, again, to Mike's point, you know, we run, we run kind of at the threshold of comfort for during our employee only hours. So um, we were, we always were fielding a certain amount of who wants to throw 50 pound bags of dog food at this temperature. And now you're putting a mask and gloves on them. Uh, and so that has been, uh, it didn't increase uh, complaints to start with. Uh, because I think there were fewer people in the stores. People were like, oh my God, I'm glad I'm still working, that kind of thing. Uh, and now that we're sort of going back to normal and our hours are extending again, we're going back to that, right? It's, uh, hey, help us out. We're wearing a mask and we're still throwing 50 pound bags of dog food. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of money. I shouldn't say a little bit. We're spending some significant dollars to make sure that our, our partners are comfortable in the stores and we're, we're taking care of those off hour. When I say off hour, I mean non-customer hour. Uh, temperature so yes okay Doug Shade anything to add on the HVAC topic well, just like um, Petco our, our systems are concentric as well um, and we've actually seen a little bit I think of a, of a reduction um, only because our foot traffic is is a lot less mm -hmm. um, and so we keep our, our stores at a pretty comfortable level but there's there's less foot traffic for that you know um, temperature gauge to be kicking on and, 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 and pumping and whatnot. So, um, I would say it's, it's actually, it's been one of those things that it's, it's, it's it, we've gotten a little bit of a break from the less foot traffic in the stores. Right. Okay. All right. Well then I'll use foot traffic as my transition to the next question that's come in. Uh, due to social distancing needs, how are you addressing new decreased customer capacity limitations? And I'll just open it to the panel. Does anybody have a comment on that? Well, from our standpoint, we implemented very quickly what would usually take eight months. We did it in two weeks. We implemented a curbside delivery so you can purchase from us and don't even come in the store. And people love that. I mean, it, it blew up. So they can go online, make their order. They can call in, make their order, and we'll just have their products ready for them when they show up outside. They don't come in the store at all. Uh, I needed to get some veterinary medicine for my dog. It was the same thing. I just, I put in my order. I called them. I said, do you have this? They said, yeah, we'll meet you in the parking lot. I was like, wow. They just walked out the parking lot and gave me my stuff. So, uh, it, we, that's one thing. The other thing that we've done is 
we've sort of moved our selections around, right? And said, okay, these are things that people sort of mill around. We move those over here. They can mill around over there and they don't back up the front of the store where usually you might want to have that right in front to get their attention. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just some things to, to help keep people distance. We remind people constantly if they walk in with five children, we go to them and say, I'm sorry, this is, this isn't a, a safe way to do this, you know, and what can we help you with? We'll go get it for you and bring it to the front right. where, where we were in uh, lockdown areas. We actually had runners. We didn't open the store. You came to the front, you told us what you wanted. We ran somebody back and got it and brought it to the front. So that's sort of how we handled the, the distancing piece. Okay. Doug or Mike, anything to add on that? Uh, from a Harlan standpoint, obviously we're 99% appointment based, right? So we can uh, handle that a couple different ways. We spread out the appointments a little bit. Uh, we can also ask people to sit in their chair after their appointment and, and or let the rest of the office know that we're walking somebody out to keep everybody else in their chairs, right? So we can, we've got the uh, ability to kind of keep customers uh, separated from each other. So that's been a, a something we've never really had in top of mind, but it was easy for us to implement. All right. Cool. And Doug Shade, anything? For us, I mean, directional arrows, I think, on the floor. You know, we've, we've kind of marked out, you know, boxes, you know, in front of our um, uh, POSs, you know, where, where our, our checkouts are and things like that. And then created uh, in our retail aisles, you know, one ways um, just to kind of control some of the flow and the, the traffic moving through the store um, so that people aren't getting too close to each other. All right, we are up. I've just been given the signal. We only have three minutes left, so I'm going to have to be picky about the questions. There's still a lot of questions. I'm going to go selfishly. This one's of interest to me. With vendor shutdowns and slowdowns that Doug referenced to, and even some going out of business of vendors or consolidation that could be anticipated, uh, size, business stability, do you see changes in vendor selection processes or criteria for selection of long term partners? That's number one. And then number two, uh, are you planning on meeting with vendors face-to-face -face anytime soon, or will it even be allowed in your corporate headquarters? Uh, I'll start with Mike. So from vendor selection, um, I, I don't see any major changes because we've used a lot of, we use a lot of national vendors now. Um, and and we've, we've had a couple of, for example, dental equipment companies that have shut down or closed certain certain lines of their business. So we're going to have to reevaluate, uh, you know, which vendors that we use. Uh, I don't see anything major coming. I mean, uh, from as far as what we're asking our vendors to do, um, there may be some different restriction, you know, requirements to, if you're going to be in the office, you got to wear PPE, you have to do it at certain times, but we've always had restrictions like that in the past. They just might shift a little bit as far as a priority. Um, and then the other question was um, meetings face to face. I mean, we're not going to be meeting face to face until we we're not going to be in the office at least until August, if not later, right? Um, yep. And then once travel restrictions start to let lighten up, we're going to have to have face to face meetings on from a development standpoint, especially on site, because we we need to walk through and ensure quality. We need to walk through and make sure that what we're providing our customers, which are the dental offices, are is the highest quality that they deserve. So we're gonna have to eventually have some face-to-face, -face, but it'll be slow. I think it'll be really slow to come back just like uh, um, it will be for, for all businesses, not just us. All right, thanks for those comments, Mike. Doug Phillips, what are your thoughts on this one? I started it. <laughs> yes, you did. Anything to add? Uh, I, I would say, uh, along with Mike, that when you know, we probably won't, uh, we probably won't have vendor face to face for quite a while. Uh, again, we're, we're trying to get our people back in mid June, but at a reduced rate. So only the people that really feel they need to be there. I have literally some people saying I have to get back in there. This is killing me to try to do it this way. Uh, we have accounting people that stayed, they didn't ever leave, but they're the only one working in the whole building. Uh, we are changing the way we do our travel now. It used to just be, hey, every project got 11 visits, for instance, if we were building a new store. Now we're saying, hey, can we reduce that? Can we implement some technology in there to reduce the number of punches we have to do? If, uh, if Larry's on the road, can he punch some other jobs? We've, we've gone to some new software that really gives us stringent templates. So there is no, Steve likes to do it this way and Doug likes to write it on paper and, and Mike likes to put it in his phone. No, 
you don't have an option. You have a tablet, here's the format. And what I love about that is then I can ask one of the construction managers, hey, can you, can you punch that aquatics replacement that we just did? And it's got it in order. He, he can, anybody that has any background can walk through it and punch it. It doesn't have to be the project manager that did the job. So we're going to reduce how, how often we have our people out there on airplanes is what our plan is. Obviously, there's some cost savings there, but not much because now Larry's got to go to all these other stores while he's on the road. But then when he goes home, he doesn't have to travel for the next week. You know, we had him on the road every week. So uh, they'll, they'll be three weeks at home, one week on the road. Okay. 30 seconds left, Doug, Shade. Any last comments on this topic? Yeah, I mean, our, currently right now with air travel, um, it's set up that uh, air travel has to be approved by our senior leadership team. So nobody is really allowed to get on an airplane unless senior leadership deems it, you know, necessary, really. Um, uh, with that being said, you know, we have projects coming up and we are still moving forward. And, um, you know, I, I know that when I have one that's going to kick off in Florida sh shortly, it will most likely get approved um, for that. Otherwise, I'm taking a really long uh, car trip down to Florida for the beginning of a project. Um, you know, and, and so I, I uh, as far as, you know, our corporate center is shut down right now in Philadelphia. I don't see that opening anytime soon. Um, and um, a lot of what we did as far as qualifying was done over the phone anyway. And some of the, my first interactions would be when we bid a job, um, I would actually have, you know, the vendor down on site. And so that would, I, I still could see that happening um, and that continuing. And, you know, until air, uh, and, until we can fly again normally, then it's just going to be on a, you know, whether it's approved or not right now for our company. And with that, you had the last word, Doug Shade. We're two minutes after, uh, and I don't want to keep you any longer than I committed to. This rock star panel has been amazing as advertised. I want to thank Mike Rolves from Heartland Dental. I want to thank Doug Shade from Icon Automotive, and I want to thank Doug Phillips from Petco very appreciative that you would take the time and share your insights on this panel discussion. I want to wish everybody that's listening good health and good fortune and uh, hope to see you all soon. Uh, we will do another one of these in June, probably late in the month. Please look for more information on that as we start to assemble our topics and our panelists. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank see you.